Okay, so this is the beginning, uh, or this was the end of our last video, and so this is the beginning of video number two for this strategy up here, the strategy for storing inside the TI Inspire calculator. We went over the basic idea and we said, if I put in a five to some algebra, I can get out a magic number, like a number 12, for example, here. And then I can compare it with magic numbers from answer choices. And I can see which one is correct because this 12 matched up with this 12. Well, now we're going to talk about, well, what, how can I tell the calculator to do that? How can I, how can I do that? And the secret is this, that uh, for, for people, for people, we say something like, put this back up here. For people, we say something like this. We say something like X equals five, this, this little piece right here. We say that. But for the calculator, we don't say that. For the calculator, the calculator wants to have information in a different way. And that's fine. We can very easily make that happen. Uh, so this is how you would store up the same information in the calculator. Let me write the same exact expression. 2 times x plus 1. Instead of writing x equals 5, this is no good for the calculator. This is the human way. This is the human way. But we need to write it in a language that the calculator can understand. So I want to tell the calculator, always use the number 5 when you see the number x. And this is exactly what it will look like in your TI Inspire calculator. So this is the calculator way. Okay. You cannot write this. It will not make sense to the calculator. You must write it like this. And now we'll check it out inside the calculator. If you do this, if you tell the calculator this information first, uh, it will now be able to give you that magic number 12. Okay. And we'll have the calculator do the exact same problem that we did before. The calculator will choose between choice A, 3x plus 3, and choice B, 2x plus 2. And we'll even add back our keyword, our keyword, which was equivalent, equivalent. And remember, that means which one is equal, equal. See the same the same beginning of the word there. And here we're still working on store. And now you're going to see why is it called store. Because some students ask, well, why would you call it store? That seems weird, sir. And uh, that's, that's true. It does seem strange. So this is our question. And we're going to try to see which of these expressions match up with this expression. Which one is equivalent? Which one will give us that magic number? So I'm going to go inside the TI Inspire. And anytime you start a new problem in these calculators, you should always press Control N. Uh, and if it asks you this question, you can just press No. Uh, it helps to clear out the calculator, cleans its mind, uh, helps it stay focused on what you want it to do for this specific problem. So remember, any new problem, just press Control N, and it'll give you this menu. Now for store, we're going to choose option one, that's add calculator. And you're going to now tell the calculator. You have to tell it first. Uh, and I'll even show you what happens if you don't. If you don't tell it, if you just type in 2 times x plus 1, uh, you're going to get a weird error. It's going to give you all of this. And uh, But what's this right here, this little word store? Now you can see, and there's that arrow also from, from the notes, you can see the word store right there. Something's wrong here. And it's asking you, can you store something for me? Because I need to know what you're talking about. Okay, uh, and you can see when I typed in that expression, here's what it looked like. And pay special attention to that X and what the X looks like, because that's important. Okay, so let's get rid of all that, and we'll fix up our expression here. I'm going to put 5, control, and up here on top you can see the word store. And that is why we call it store. That's why we call this strategy store. And you press that. And now I'm going to put my X because I'm dealing with the letter X in this problem. Okay, and I hit enter. And now the calculator is just going to acknowledge, okay, when I see an X, I will think of the number five. All right. So let's come uh, back typing in this exact expression again, two times X plus one. And something students should notice is this X is bold now. This X is bold now. And that's, it's bold because it's filled up. 
it's filled up with the number five. And that's what this line right here, what we typed did. And you'll see that now if I hit enter, I do not get an error. I don't get an error that says this variable is not defined. I get the number 12, which if you remember from video number one, that was our magic number. So right here, I didn't have to do any algebra or any math. All I did was tell the calculator this little command right here to store up that five. And it gave me the number 12. And I'll even, I'll even circle that with red because it is important. This again is my magic number. So you can see you didn't have to do any of the extra work. You literally just copy exactly what you see. And now we'll copy in choice A and we'll see what we get out for that. Now, I don't have to tell the calculator again. It still remembers. It still remembers that I'm using the number five. So let me type in 3x plus 3. You type exactly what you see. Again, the x is bold. And when you hit enter, ah, there's that 18 we saw before. And that 18 tells me very clearly that this guy gave me an 18, which does not match, which does not match my magic number 12. And of course, if I go to the calculator a final time, and I type in 2x plus 2, and I hit enter. Now, again, I can see my number 12. So since it matches to my magic number that I was looking for from my original question, I know that this guy gives me that magic 12 right here. And that 12 is, of course, the same as my magic number up here, which means that this is going to be my answer, this guy right here. Let me highlight it for you so you can see what I'm talking about. This is my answer, choice B. This is equivalent to this because this 12 matches this 12. And it's that simple. It's that simple. In the next video, I'll show you how to use it uh, with two different letters. So we'll try some stuff that looks a little more complicated because this one could seem very simple. Um, but if you try it with different letters, you'll see that there are some tricks and some some little uh, tips that you have to do to make this strategy work. But again, this is a great way to check equivalency, especially if you get stuck on your algebra or you just can't figure out a right answer. You can check equivalency with the TI uh, by doing this.